everybody, welcome to Beyond the Lines. My name is Sarah, I am the artist behind the pencil Geschichten and today I'm gonna work with grey colored pencils. And the coloring book that I chose to show you how I work with the greys is The Nature Scape. And I decided to go with zebras because they kind of fit the black and white theme. Hence, ah, in the middle there is grey. But uh, as I showed you in the two videos before that talk about the greys in um, ink sections, uh, there's warm grey and there's cold grey, there's blue grey and brownish grey. So uh, I'm gonna show you how I work with the colored pencils where I put shading to um, have the zebras be separated in this uh, pool of zebras and uh, you can watch along. I hope you enjoy. Here we go. These are the zebras and you could say, well, it's almost done. There's not a lot of to do for you, Sarah. This is a cop out kind of coloring page to show you the grays with the color pencils. But tell, let me tell you, there's still quite a few things to add, at least in my opinion, to make this a scenery, a cohesive scenery. So far, there is <coughs> there is time to have a sip of tea soon. <laughs> and also, um, all the zebras kind of melt together. It's very difficult to distinguish them. And it's way easier to do so when you have the, well, shading in and a little bit of contrast here and there. Now, zebras, as you can see by nature, are black and white, but uh, if you look at them closely, they still got gray tones or beige tones, especially in their white fur. Now, I do have the gray pencils next to me, uh, plus the black and the white. The white, I'm not sure if I'm even going to use, uh, maybe only a little bit for blending, but usually I can get away with uh, the lightest gray tones to do the same thing. And usually I go with um, the cold colors in the back and then I move to the warm colors. Now with gray, let me adjust my mini lights to not have a shadow at the page. Um, with my uh, zebras here, um, I don't want to color in the background. That would be uh, in a normal coloring page or drawing or something, I would probably have shades of green or shades of yellow ochre, depending. <coughs> if I wanted to have a spring-like fresh scene or something more of, um, well, the natural habitat of zebras, which is a tundra. So, the tea is yummy, which means I can now go on and uh, uh, tell you how I want to color the zebras. I want to keep them more in the colder tone, so I'm probably staying away from the warm grays, or if I'm going to add them, I'm going to add the darker tones. But I will probably use a lot of the paint gray, which has a bluish tint, even more so than the cold grays. So this is going to be uh, one of my go-to pencils. And I'm also going to use uh, mid-gray probably gonna use yeah I'm gonna use a black of course and um, I'm going to use a very light gray uh, the um, the numbers of the pencils will be on the blog post later today so about an hour after, after this video goes live the blog post will be up so you can read up on the pencil numbers so you don't have to remember or write anything down also there will be close-up photos so you can see um let's start with the background it is in any kind of drawing or um 
painting, it is easier for me personally to build up on contrast instead of having one bit and then have to tone it down. So adding things is easier for me than leaving things out, meaning I will have less uh, different shades of gray and less contrast and less detail in the background because, well, it's further away. You can't really see the details and close up. I will have more and I find it easier to add things. Also, I'm not going to smudge anything that this way, meaning I'm going to start up here and uh, I'm going to have the uh, shadows uh, penciled in from zebras that are in the background. Let's start on the upper uh, right because I'm left-handed and again I don't want to smudge anything. And I'm just going over the line work that comes with this <coughs> coloring page. Sorry I'm still a bit congested from my cold that I brought home from vacation though it's gotten way better over the last couple of days, but I'm still not 100% there yet. So I'm just going over the lines that are indicated by uh, this coloring page with a very light hand. I can always add things. I find it, like I had said earlier, I find it way more difficult to remove things. So I'm just following the lines and putting a little bit of paints gray in where the shadows are. Uh, I'm going to take black to the uh, black stripes of the zebra in a minute because they're kind of um, only partially colored in. I'm not gonna color all of them in because that would look kind of flat but I want to have a little bit of a darker tone here and there too. So now I have the shadows in. I can go and have a bit of the black added here to have some of those stripes be um, solid, especially in what would be the shadowy areas. Where the light hits, I can leave them with this stripey look that they come with on the print. That's also something that really helps me a lot with a lot of um, coloring pages especially, but also with my own drawings or paintings. Um, black is not the color I use first when I want to color something in black, but I go with dark blue, dark gray, dark green to have a bit of a reflection of the surroundings and the choice of color there depends on what the surroundings are. If I'm in a forest, of course, there will be a little bit more of the green or the brown. If uh, I have... Um, metal or colder, colder bluish tones at sea or something like that. I'm using blues, sometimes even purples, but that is more for a night sky actually. I'm going in with purple and blue before I, and gray before I go in with a black and then have the black only added here and there and not solid over whatever part I want to color in or that I want to have look black because that makes it look less flat. Only black makes things look flat. If I want to achieve a flat look, sometimes I want to do that for a background maybe, uh, I'm definitely going to go in with... Uh, with a solid black, but not if I can help it otherwise, if I want to achieve other things. So that would be zebra number one. Not a lot of detail, not a lot of shading. Uh, maybe he has to get something down here, a little more. Just a smidge of the mid-gray. <coughs> 
maybe a bit more here where the head meets the body because there will be shadow and that is that zebra number one is done now I um, I haven't decided yet where the light will come from but I think the upper right is a wonderful idea because I kind of shaded uh, the head to the left and also have the neck a little darker so I'm going to have the light come from the upper right hand side meaning I will have all the shadings towards the lower left side. Uh, this is always something that I can't stress enough you determine at the beginning of your drawing, of your painting, of your coloring, that um, you decide, okay, where's the light gonna come from? Because that will determine where your shadows are, what colors you want to maybe prefer on a certain part in your artwork. It really makes a lot of sense <laughs> to decide that early on maybe after it's like the second second thing you want to do the first thing is what do you want to draw or paint and the next one is where is the light going to come from and then you can you can decide okay uh what supplies do i want to use what a surface do I want to use? Do I want to have a canvas or paper? Um, all those other details. <coughs> uh, so see here it is a little more difficult to find out where the zebra stops and the next zebra begins because there is not really contrast there. So I'm going in a bit heavier with my uh, Payne's gray because this is where the line is between the zebras and then it goes around here it's almost like a hidden object puzzle picture here where you have to find out where is the zebra Instead of find Waldo or where's Waldo, it's like where's the zebra? That one particular one. Going in with black again. If I would use multiple colors on this coloring page instead of just gray, I would have quite a bit of indigo which is a warm dark blue uh, i would use that quite a bit because this is a very nice shading color for uh, black and white things and i would probably also use um, i might do that later quite a bit of the warm gray for the front zebras. The first row zebra is gonna have some warmer colors but for those in the back here I would use quite a bit of indigo to uh, shade them but since I'm working with a monochrome way for these color special <clears throat> um, pages here I'm just going to go with gray and black and white and then I have to add a little more uh, different layers of the same color in just various shades like I do here it's the same cold gray but I'm adding a lighter shade instead of getting high contrast with just a bit of blue and just a bit of paints gray. Maybe I'm gonna show that to you in one of the next um, coloring pages either in the Outlander book or in the uh, um, Magical City book.
because it's quite the difference. Okay, you need a little bit back here. Let's take the next zebra, which is here. There's an ear, there's an ear, and here's the back. And uh, then I think I will uh, have a little bit of a time lapse until I get to a different thing that I'm doing. So adding another shade of gray in this case. But first, let's go for this zebra. And ear number two. Very light hand. And here is where the dark shadow comes in behind that ear here. Blending it out with a lighter tone. We're also going to leave some of those zebras white on the white and others I'm going to have a bit of this light gray added. <coughs> Just to again uh, increase contrast and uh, make those zebras distinguishable from each other. Because they're crammed in here like in a tin of sardines or a tin of zebras. Oh, I hope not. Oh well. And I'm only using the light gray here on the white when it comes to the shadow side, so the left hand side, which again is not only helping the contrast and everything, but it also helps with light and shadow in general. Otherwise it would look as if the zebra would have a light source on both the left and the right hand side. So and like this I can uh, make sure that you know the light source was gonna come from the um, right hand side. Let's add a little bit of the light gray also here. <coughs> um, I'm sorry, I'm still getting over my cold. It was so good those last couple of days and I think when I'm talking a lot for a longer time, then uh, my voice and also my nose still say, ah, no, we don't want that. So I'm sorry for the sniffles. So this one, let's color in the ear because that is definitely here. It's going to be a little trickier. I have to look at the neck in a minute to see um, where this zebra goes. Adding a, just a smidge of a shadow here on the, on the ear where the neck is covering it up and the outside of the ear is to the left hand side so it's kind of shaded. 
So where do you go? Let's puzzle this out. This is the new zebra. So you go here and here is the rest of the head plus <coughs> plus a shadow on the neck quite a bit of a shadow so that is why I'm coloring in this area solid paints gray and then feather it out with a lighter touch towards the left adding a little bit of black too And here we go, a little bit of the medium gray towards the lower part of the jaw. And that will definitely set this zebra apart from the one that is in front. Could even get a little heavier. With the medium gray. And It also helps if you squint once in a while and look at your uh, piece of art because then you can determine if your values are uh, correct and if you have enough contrast between certain things you want to uh, have in your picture. Let me squint. <laughs> It's kind of difficult with the black and white and all the stripes, but trust me, it usually works. Okay. Getting there, a little more shadow here behind this big ear. And also here. And of course here. getting there. So I'm going to color in the rest now and have some music playing for you except for those three zebras in the front because they will get a little more treatment with warmer tones. <coughs> but all the others here in the back and also in the midsection they're just gonna get the cold tone uh, treatment. So enjoy the music. I'm gonna be back in a couple of minutes.
Okie dokie, the background is done and now I do have those three uh, zebras in the front and like I had said just a couple of minutes ago, I'm going to bring in some warm grays now because these are really close to the viewer and I want to set them apart a little bit uh, from the other zebras. So uh, I will start with a warm gray at the uh, nose part here of the right hand side zebra. Just bring in a little bit of a warmer shade. And I'm pulling it into the uh, stripy part of the zebra though that part will <coughs> excuse me mainly stay uh, black and white with the colder tones but towards the mouth oftentimes you find that zebras do have a beige or a brownish tone so I'm going to add that here coloring the nostril with the Payne's gray first and then bringing in the black for the darkest parts because even in the nostril there is kind of a reflection because well it's a wet surface so you will have a little bit of a reflection there Going in with the Payne's Gray. And now I'm bringing in a, another dark warm gray tone to shade this nose here a bit heavier. And bring in the lighter warm gray tone to blend things out so some shadow down here
and bring that in and right away the um, the animal in front is set apart from the animals in the back so that doesn't mean though that I'm only gonna use the warm gray for those zebras in the front not at all using my cold tones too but I'm mixing them with the warm tones and that will make for enough um, contrast I think And a little more here. That mid tone. Also, just with the lightest touch ever, a little more of the warm dark gray. Just to have this look smooth. There we go. Now I'm two ears, two ears. Okay, we just see one ear of this zebra. So, so again, Payne's gray. And a little bit of black. For the ears, it's pretty much the same way I colored the ones in the background, but I'm just gonna uh, exchange some of the cold tones for warm tones in this front row of animals. Like, for example, here, I'm taking a warm gray now, adding that. And, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to bring in the dark tone for the stripes, for the darkest shadows first. So I'm having the Payne's Gray in my hand. I still can go darker with both the uh, black pencil on top and or the warm grape pencil on top if I so desire. But first I will have the darks get in. Sorry for being distracted just for a split second, but I got uh, messages on my iPad that were kind of important. So sorry about that. Um, hope I said it cohesively. If not, let me try again. Um, I'm bringing in warm gray tones uh, here and there where I actually would have used a cold one in the back. But I'm also going to use the cold tones, of course, in the front. Otherwise, this would look just plain weird and uh, I find it easier to get the darkest shadows done first before I bring in the lighter tones so 
that is why I am really darkening up behind the ear. And though the light comes from the right hand side, there's still the head that casts a shadow. <coughs> Sorry. Onto this uh, zebra body too. So there's a bit of a darker tone down here. Because again, the head and everything is casting a shadow here. I don't know which zebra has this leg. Because here's one leg going down, there's the other. Maybe, I don't know, it has three front legs. No idea. So I'm just gonna shade it. As if it would be for another zebra. So it will have a dark shadow here. Bring in a bit of cold gray. A little bit of a Payne's gray. Hypen up that shadow here. And now I can bring in the dark from the top here where the mane is and a little bit from the lower body as well. Again, I'm not coloring in the whole black stripe here because I want to have a difference between the darker black and the lighter black so where there is a reflection when the uh, fur is kind of silky. Now I bring in the warmer gray Blend it with the darkest parts here behind the ear and also into the ear. And I'm leaving a little bit of uh, the zebra just white. That's pretty much where the lightest fur is. And I'm also blending out the dark parts here in the lower body. I'm 
And I'm using the lighter of the warm grays that I do have here. And now I'm bringing in with a very light touch the darker of the warm grays and go over those stripes and also add a bit here between the left and the right leg squinting my eyes for um, value check and that looks pretty good I just need a little bit here there we go so I'm blending this out have smooth lines And then I can uh, take care of the head. <coughs> so again, this part here is in shadow. So let me bring in the warm gray and separate those two zebra heads. And then I'm coming in with Payne's Gray to increase contrast. Really have a dark shadow here. And then I'm moving towards the right hand side and I'm going to bring in the cold gray in a minute, the lightest one, because again, I don't want this zebra to look too different from the ones in the back. You still should uh, be able to see them as one big family group, a herd or a school, <laughs> a school of zebras. Uh, whatever you want to call them. And that is why I'm bringing in tones that I used in the back as well to have repetition, which again makes this harmonic looking or smoother, calmer, more cohesive. You don't separate the objects on your art piece when you have color repetition. The mind puts them into one big uh, group of objects. Darkening up some of those stripes. I'm leaving the eye part here uh, light because I don't want the zebra to look too dark. There still has to be a bit of a highlight there. Shading the nose a bit more. And then I'm bringing in the paints gray once more to darken up the jawline there we go and I'm going to do the same thing to the other two zebras and uh, then I'm gonna be back
So here we go. These are the zebras. Um, I will just check here. The eye is a little bit too light. So I'm going to go over it with black to darken it up. Um, again, usually I would have something like a colored background uh, a blue a green or maybe a yellow ochre but in this case for the video here i'm gonna leave it as it is to keep with the theme and this is how you can well get definition contrast and um well shading going on with just six pencils all of them being gray it is it it looks so complicated it's not um it's just a matter of um confidence for one uh patience and um because it takes the time to layer, especially with the colored pencils, um, and just um, answering the same old question in your head. Is this in the light or is this in the dark? Is this close? Is this far away? And according to what the answer then is in your head, you have a distinct uh, color, a st distinct shade of a color that you apply to that part of your artwork. Um, if you have any more questions uh, regarding the zebras, um, the uh, gray colors, why I chose exactly those grays and not the ones that are here still in the box, for example, um, you can leave me a comment in the comment section below. I'm happy to answer and uh, help you out there. There's gonna be, uh, the, the blog post is up by now, so you can hop on over to my blog. It's in the description box below. Pinselgeschichten.de is the website where the newest post is uh, about these zebras here showing close up photos and again the numbers of the pencils. So if you like that color combo, you can definitely um, note it uh, in your notepad of 
color combinations, which is, by the way, a handy thing um, to have, uh, especially if you're a beginner and you're testing out color combinations. I'm going to be back next week with, uh, I think it is, yeah, it's watercolors in gray, the, the last gray uh, video. Um, after that, it's going to be a little bit more colorful. And uh, I thank you very much. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new and you want to see more and want to be uh, reminded when I have, or notified as they say, when I have a new video up, uh, hit the subscribe button and the bell button and you should be good to go. Uh, thank you very much. Have fun. Have a wonderful day. Color something, paint something, draw something. Do something that you really, really like and pamper your soul for at least five minutes. And yes, that's an order. Take good care, folks. Bye-bye.